OK. Now in previous class. So now in previous class, we mentioned some mechanism or how the oxide microstructure works. We have three category P type and type N type. We have two. Right, I'm going to show you the <clears throat> the diagram for these two type, right? So on the left and right, and then another one for the P type. Now, uh, for today's lesson, we're going to focus on a little bit more. So these are the oxide film properties. Of all this, this list. <clears throat> all right. Now, um, when we talk about oxide uh, for this for this uh, chapter, uh, you have to know oxide initially when they form, when it's formed the oxide on the surface, uh, is a good thing for the metals. It's a good thing. It's a protection layer at the initial stage. But as you increase the process, uh, build on and build on and increase the temperature, that's where the the oxide will fall, the, will have crack. And also it will break off from the surface. Then the corrosion will go into the uh, metal surface and uh, uh, start the corrosion again. Okay, so these are the properties for oxide film. <clears throat> they stick to the surface, right? So oxide film, they are good in sticking to the metal surface. Um, high melting point. So you can imagine um, Oxide as something like carbon, right? Carbon C. Um, uh, you can burn burn them and melt them at a very high temperature. Um, this is about their evaporation. So you know that carbon is a very stubborn element um, because it's, it's melt at very high temperature. So um, they also have a very stable chemical properties, right? Um, and their thermal expansion coefficient. Thermal expansion coefficient uh, means something when you heat it up, you will expand their dimension. So for oxide, for the oxide film that fall above the um, metals element, they, their thermal expansion coefficient is the same as the metals. So <clears throat> when they are same with metals, uh, similar, similar, to the metals, you imagine you have two layer of object, and both of them, you you have the same expansion ratio, uh, expansion coefficient. When you build the, when you increase the temperature on the top layer, oxide also expand, metal also expand. So if their expansion coefficient, they are expanding at the same rate. So actually, the damage is not there. So if their expansion coefficient is different. So when you increase the temperature, uh, some will experience tension and compression on the contact surface and then crack will happen. So uh, this is why <clears throat> when you have an oxide film at a low temperature, um, then it, 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 it will protect the metals. All right? This, this explains why oxide at the early stage of the formation, of its formation, uh, um, it is good for the protection. Then uh, the rest you can read here. Uh, low electricity conduction. Uh, why this one is good as uh, oxide? Because you know that corrosion start <clears throat> when you have an exchange of elect e negative charge. So if you cannot or not allow conductivity to happen, then the exchange of electricity cannot happen. I mean the electron, not electricity, electron negative charge cannot happen. So when they cannot happen means corrosion is limited. Okay. Um, okay. Then the rest is uh, another property, uh, diffusion coefficient. Uh, M positive means a metal positive. Metalcation means M positive charge. And oxygen ion, uh, O negative. Right. So mean what what does it the last sentence means? Means that if you are form oxide, means the the product of the oxide uh, form of uh, consists of uh, the met the oxide film consists of two things. One is metal. One is the 
oxygen, you know that when we have uh, the equation for oxide, metal M plus oxygen, you get MO, right? So um, this MO, this uh, oxide, right, is a very strong uh, uh, chemical reaction. So if you, uh, it's very hard for them to break away. So that's why the chemical terms here is low diffusion coefficient means uh, it's not very easy to break away. Okay. So these are the properties explain how oxide can be a protection. Huh? So again, this slide is important. Um, it can be a question, a short question um, under um, chapter four, especially when it comes to oxidation reaction. Right? It can be four under one question ask you about oxidation and one section is ask you to give a reason why oxide films uh, provide a high degree of protection to the metal or alloy element. Okay, so these are the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven points here. Uh, maybe the question will ask you uh, list three reason uh, why oxide film they are uh, a good protection <clears throat> under oxidation uh, reaction yeah? all right so um, i hope you can see the reason over here next we look at uh, some models kinetic models so when we talk about kinetic principle or uh, equation used to calculate uh, the kinetic models we have three yeah? We have three types of equation. Uh, with this, uh, with this, you learn in your advanced mathematics, uh, max two, and some even in max one. Huh? So uh, you have three. You, you know that you have three kinds of equation, right? You have linear equation, you have quadratic equation, and you have polynomial equation. So remember these three types of equation. It going to help you to explain what are the kinetic models that you use to uh, to characterize the oxidation rates, uh, oxidation oxidation rates. And this one we uh, if we study under pure metals, uh, oxidant ox oxidation rates on pure metal. Again, we have um, three type of equation here, or uh, we call it a law. First is parabolic, uh, parabolic law, uh, parabolic rate law, uh, log rate law, linear uh, law. Huh? So we have three types of equation here. So um, the first type you see here, you got square kt and x0. So these are the, all the parameter here. All right. We talk about how the uh, oxidation rates are uh, calculated if you are using parabolic law. Okay, so X X is the oxide film thickness. This is the end result that you can calculate. What is the thickness of oxide that form on top of the uh, metal layer? Um, T is the time, Kp is the coefficient, is the uh, coefficient rate that you measure through experiment, and then you 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 find what is your Kp. X also is a constant that you find from the graph. Okay, so basically, if you have this equation, uh, can you imagine the type of the graph that you can plot? This is, let's say you take this one as y, y equal to mx plus c, okay? y equal to m x plus c so you are plotting if you're plotting y axis represent x square or the thickness of the film and this one is in the square so you you on your y axis is x square your x axis is your time then when in the experiment you can measure the thickness you can measure the time so the on your graph of your y and x um, you can have the the line on the graph, and that line will give you parabolic rate of law. Okay, 
So you can you can estimate that. So from the experiment, from the graph that I just said just now, your, your, you measure the thickness in the square or, and you plot in the y axis and x axis you plot in time, then you get a straight line. Okay, of course, if you do not plot your x in the x square, you plot your x in base your y axis is x, your thickness, then you get a parabolic shape. You can change your shape from parabolic to linear by changing the x square for your y axis. Uh, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. So this is just a conversion or presentation of uh, uh, equation into graph form. So I hope you can visualize what is this uh, law, uh, this equation can give you. Okay. Uh, any question on the parabolic law? Any question? No, sir. Good, yeah? All right. Now the next one will be on log. Log rate, there's equation using log equation. Again, x equal constant, we call it uh, ke. Um, and then log something, ct plus b. And uh, again, when you see log, means that you can change the log and you play around with the log and the e. The, uh, the, the e, e, e is epsilon, right? So E, you can change log to epsilon relationship, all right? So you plot, again, you can just, you can plot this uh, graph in the log format. Uh, uh, let's say you, you put this on as y, y equal to mx plus c if you want, right? It means your c is zero. It will intersect from uh, origin of your graph. These are the things, lah. So KE, they are constant, C constant, B constant. Okay. Um, another one is linear rate law. Also uh, more direct, you just measure and then they have a parameter and time. So if you have this equation, then uh, you are fall under linear rate law. Okay. Now basically, uh, you are by using uh, the same set of experimental data, meaning you are measuring the x means the thickness of the film and the time of the formation, uh, oxide formation time. You can actually plot your graph in three type of uh, graph here. Okay, same data, but you can plot them based on different equation here. Okay, one is in a parabolic form, one is in the log form, one in the linear form. Okay, and KL here means the another constant and a constant. Okay, so actually they are same. They are the same thing. Only presentation of graph is different. And on because of the axis, the y axis, x axis, the parameter you use is different. So because of the different presentation, the constant value here also use a different one. Huh? Okay, because they these are the gradient of the graph. Clear with three model here. Um, this is uh, when we have time to conduct experiment. Then uh, this one, you 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 will come into this three law here. Okay. Um, okay. The next one we look at, um, for example, uh, the measurement of weight change per unit area. Uh, when you conduct high high temperature corrosion experiment, um, one of the way you you measure the corrosion problems or the corrosion um, condition uh, is uh, by using this way. You, you there's a way you calculate weight uh, weight change per unit area. Uh, this one you can you can measure using computerized uh, microscope. All right, they can uh, you can compare before and after. Means you before the you conduct the experiment you take the sample. You snap under the microscope, a computer microscope, and and then you run the, the and then you run the high temperature experiment. Then you let the corrosion happen, and then you pass the sample back under the microscope. The computer will uh, measure the condition again. Uh, for example, you the computer will match the original dimension and the changes of dimension after the corrosion uh, process happen. Okay, so all these uh, um, you can read from the photo here, but 
uh, if what is important that is that uh, you know there is a way to measure. Okay, there's a way to measure. Um, what else? Eh? Okay, so under this uh, measurement, uh, usually what you observe after the corrosion, you will see there's a shrinkage of um, outer diameter. And also you will see that there are some portion that not yet corroded. Uh, this one is the, the core, the, the, the original core. Right, and this one will be the corrosion attack. Uh. All these will be corrosion attack layer. Okay, so yep. Um, one of the drawback of this kind of uh, measurement is that sometimes be because high temperature corrosion is is a very complex equation. Right. Um. So some of the sometimes the weight changes, uh, the weight changes that you measure under a microscope, um, you're not able to directly relate to the thickness penetration. For example, here, th this is the thickness of the uh, penetration, right? Thickness of penetration. Um, okay. You need to support your experiment data with the strength equipment. Um, a strength equipment assessment, meaning that you need to put this uh, subject or this uh, experiment uh, subject or uh, sample to go and uh, put under tensile uh, equipment. Means you go and pull it or compress it just to find out what, what has this corrosion done uh, on the integrity of the structure. Um, and sometimes when you did this kind of experiment, you will have a few graphs. One is the picture before and after under the microscope. Um, then you have the tensile uh, disruptive test, means you pull or compress, you will get the tensile graph or compressive graph. Um, another one is that you will uh, have a photography at the microscopic, uh, we call it microscopic, uh, photo, um, you will use a, a high power microscope and to observe the uh, material uh, microscope. Uh, have you guys uh, have you guys done some uh, lab work? I I not think so because uh, because of MCO right. Uh, have any lecturers show you the uh, photo of a methodolog uh, me metallurgy graphic uh, 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 or the photo of the metals, the, the microscopic uh, photo. Have you seen? Have you conducted the experiment before? Yes, no? No, sir. Haven't, huh? Okay. Um, okay, remind me, remind me if uh, when you come back to campus in January or February, um, when you come back to campus and if you're in the campus, um, remind me, if I forget, uh, remind me to uh, bring you to the material lab. Uh, we, we, uh, then I will show you the, the, the profile of uh, the, the metal sample. Okay, so they, they will be a metal sample. Uh, we, we can look under microscope and see uh, normal metal under microscope is how. And then do we have a sample of uh, cure or we call it heat treatment sample? What happened to the methodology? So this one should be covered under material subject. Uh, there is a module uh, that study material. So um, you should already cover that uh, in that module. Eh? So, but anyway, if you are in campus, you are welcome to uh, see me and uh, you say, uh, Doctor, I want to see the the sample is it possible uh, then we arrange time with the lab tech and go into the lab and we use the equipment just to observe right at least you some have some idea what what is the uh, metallog metallographic uh, technique means we, we, we look under microscope and see the structure microstructure of the subject okay all right and also as a future engineer we, we are going to graduate as an engineer uh, 
at least you should seen or saw or observed before uh, what is a uh, metals uh, surface photo i mean under microscope you should you should seen that before uh, if not uh, when you go to work later on uh, especially when it come to design um, you will forget some of the fundamental safety problem huh? okay next we look at um, uh, two type of uh, metals one is the standard steels and normal uh, we have two types of standard steel one is authentic and ferritic uh, there are two uh. one is uh, authentic authentic and ferritic we have two uh, two types of standard steel here so both of them you put them under high temperature um, and then you measure or you observe the stress rupture properties and chip properties uh, they there's an experimental uh, chip huh? uh, there's an experimental data for uh, this kind of uh, these two metals right it's a very old experiment uh, there are lots of data about this these two kinds of metals standard steel they are two type uh, authentic and ferritic um, a lot of people already done this kind of experiment. You can find all this data online and even uh, on journals paper. So on my back here, you will see there is a properties of uh, authentic, authentic, authentic. Right? Apologize for my uh, pronunciation here. Uh, so for the, I, I just say this one is A, uh, A and F, uh, so for the standard steel, the first type, right? First type, you see the, the chemical compound here. And um, in the industry, uh, each type of metals, you are assigning the grade for them. It is a special code for the material, right? So normally they assign four, four digits of code. Uh, then each code represents a uh, different meaning, okay? It depends on the handbook, the material handbook. So, for example, aesthetic uh, um, standard steel, you can see it consists of carbon, MN, uh, manganese, chromium, nickel, MO, and others. So, you can see the differences between this one and this one under this graph. Okay, so you can see for the first type is until here. Second type is this from here to here. Okay, so there are there are differences. Uh, how you know the differences between the two type of metals? You look at their element. What element was added into the steel, right? So you know that uh, standard steel they are uh, one type of alloy, alloy steel. And under material subject, you should already learn what how to do alloying or uh, what is alloying what is metal alloying right so you add all this uh, material inside there uh, to form uh, alloy metal okay and uh, you have all the strength and all this okay um, this one is uh, tested under specification of this one eh? um, so as a as an engineer or scientist you always refer to handbook there's a standard of testing, right? So when you uh, present your data, um, either in your FIP or in uh, engineering conferences or even in journals uh, presentation, um, you should show to your audience what method you use according to certain standard, yeah? So this is just a reminder, right? So I think all of you are, in, you are doing your FIP. So every time you present something, about data make sure you uh, you present what method you use what 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 testing standard you use eh? so for example this one is uh, under ASTM standard uh, ASTM standard there's a specification code for that one so then you get this this uh, uh, all this data right um, just a reminder uh, just a uh, recall some information about what is uh, what is tensile graph what is a stress strain graph right so 
under tensile, tensile test, you will get stress and strain, right? So stress, you have two types of stress. One is tensile stress, one is compressive stress. If you're pulling both ends, the metals will elongate. If you compress, the metals will decrease in size, but most of the tests uh, we will use tensile test, right? We're pulling at both ends. So then strain, what is strain? Strain is a deformation ratio. You compare uh, the end result with the original length or original dimension. Right? It's a deformation uh, parameter here. So when you conduct tensile test, you will get this kind of graph. This is a, this is a normal a metal tensile uh, behavior in general, okay? In general, without referring to the uh, actual data, but this, this is the type of the line that you expect when you uh, conduct the tensile test on metals element, okay? So there will be a point where it breaks away, which is here, okay? So uh, when you conduct uh, experiment on tensile, uh, on a standard steel, two types of standard steels, uh, under high corrosion, uh, co uh, high temperature corrosion, one of the way is you are conducting the tensile test. So you get a two type of line or uh, two line. One line is for aesthetic and one line is for ferritic. Uh, okay. Then you compare what, what is the strength and all this. By the way, the table I give you just now, you already can see the, the tensile strength and uh, the U strength, the tensile strength, and the elongation. Okay. Okay. Uh, another one is the definition of chip property. So, uh, what mean by chip? What mean by chip? Right. C R E P. What mean by chip? Um, um. I think most most of the most of the module especially when it comes to uh, material testing uh, at um, uh, graduate, uh, undergraduate level, um, most of the time um, we don't come across the chip experiment, uh, only when you come to uh, postgraduate or during master level or PhD level, then you will look at uh, the, the, the creep or, or chip, uh, um, a creep, uh, creep properties. So what is creep? Creep is um, you look at the stress under constant stress, you look at the behavior or deformation when you increase the temperature. Means under that that uh, experiment, you will put the the, the sample um, with a heater, and then you increase the metal sample temperature gradually. Then you start to pull the sample. Okay, that experiment with the elevated temperature, we call it a creep, creep test. Okay, yeah. So that one fall under high temperature corrosion uh, measurement, right? So how you measure a sample? Um, three method, uh, maybe two method. So one is use microscope. You you use microscope, computerized microscope. You do measurement on the before and after. Microscope, you have two type. One is do measurement. And the one is you look at the microscopic uh, uh, observation under microscope. You look at the structure, microstructure of the that one. One is measurement, one is microstructure. Another one for high corrosion, high temperature corrosion measurement. You do you conduct tensile test with its pooling, and another one is called creep test. So tensile stress is without changing the temperature. You are set at room temperature maybe. Uh, 16 degrees C or 18 degrees C at Malaysia, maybe um, 24 degrees C, all right? So because most of the lab, you already have the air con already, so you can um, control the testing temperature. Um, beside the stress, uh, tensile stress experiment, you also conduct creep, uh, creep, uh, creep test, uh, creep tensile test, meaning you, you Conduct this using the same machine, but you change the temperature of your sample, and then you pull. You will see different uh, uh, data. 
Okay, so um, when you when you're being asked of um, how do you how do you evaluate um, high corrosion high temperature corrosion sample? There are four main uh, there are four main approach. Huh? Two under microscope, two under tensile loading. Okay, microscope one, you do measurement under microscope, right? The diameter, right? Then after that, you observe, you take photo of the microscopic level, right? You look inside, you zoom inside the microscopic level. You look at the microstructure. What is the change of microstructure before and after? Then under the second type of experiment, you use tensile loading. So tensile loading, you have stress test. Uh, without uh, at a constant temperature and another one is the creep test creep test means you check for creep properties where you change the temperature okay i hope you see the the whole picture how you do measurement yeah okay so this is a sample of a graph that we expected in the creep test right creep test so you can see the point and so on at the time. Uh, this from this point until this point is when you elevate the temperature. Okay. It's a bit different. Huh? This shape, this is a creep test. This is the tensile test. You see the difference of the, the graph, right? The, uh, creep, uh, creep test is versus time. Huh? This time. Um, sorry for my chair. Let me move my chair. All right. So I'm going to show you the uh, two type of uh, graph. So this one, the first one is stress versus temperature. Stress versus temperature. We are comparing two type of uh, standard steel here. Uh, ferric and authentic or Authentic, ferric, authentic. There are two type of metal here. One is a little bit higher. One is ferric. So you can see there's a distinctive or significant difference between two type of material. So if the material is ferritic, it will always less than the authentic. Eh? The stress versus temperature. So as you can see here. If you want to, if your, uh, this is more on the selection of material that are uh, exposed to high temperature. Meaning if you want to design a reactor or, if you, or you want to design a wind turbine, you want to uh, design, not wind turbine, but you want to design a turbine devices that uh, the turbine blade or heat sink that operate in the high temperature environment then you are referring to this kind of chart. Of course, this one, this chart only show you two types. There are lots of encyclopedia, uh, material encyclopedia or handbook that will show you an overlapping of lots of material. Okay, so this is just an extract of two types of material. So from here, if you are want to operate at a very high temperature, that adding uh, that having a high stress uh, condition means authentic will be the more suitable cadenate compared to ferric, uh, ferritic uh, stainless steel. Both are stainless steels, but if you want, it, it depends on the operation condition. Uh. If you want to operate at a high temperature, but high stress, you choose authentics, but it depends. Uh, it depends on your operating procedure. Let's say the operating procedure, let's say I pick a point. Um, here, 600. Then I draw a line. Draw a line, I will have a, I have a zone where your stress is at here and your stress at, at here. So it depends on the point of your operating uh, operating stress. All right. So if you need a higher stress, you use uh, this type. If you look at, need a lower stress, you use this one. Um, again, um, when in the industry, uh, beside we look in at the uh, material properties um, one of the major consideration when it comes to commercial project is the cost 
right? It's a cost of the material when you fabricate something, right? So sometimes you need to compensate between material cost and uh, what can they do, uh, their engineering uh, function. So sometimes you need to find a balance. If you if you use a ferric uh, uh, stainless steels, then you might need to spare some money for changing of material or we call it maintenance, okay? Because it's going to break under certain stress. You need to change the devices as many times as you that is required, okay? So this is more on material application. Another one, I show you another chart. This is uh, between the ferric and uh, authentic also. Uh, this one is under, or oh, this one is a uh, crypt test. This one is uh, rapture strength. This is under stress analysis. Rapture, this one is rapture. This graph is on rapture. This one on uh, crypt. This one conducted at, uh, this, this data was captured within the 10,000 hours test. Okay, 10,000 tests. Um, then another one, oh, another one also 10,000 hours. Okay, so these are the differences, the data between ferric and authentic. Okay, different graph, yeah? One is rapture, one is crypt test, crypt properties. Okay. And, um, I think you, you've seen this one before in your material module. So when you talk about material, there's a code for that uh, particular material. Uh, one of it, we I show it here, is a UNS system. What is UNS? A unified numbering system we use for alloy material or all kinds of material out there. Uh, that, but U, UNS is uh, normally used for alloy uh, or metals, uh, uh, metals uh, element, okay? So as you can see here, uh, we, I won't go through all, I just pick, uh, pick the code here. So for example, um, the first one, you see R something. So they are inside this alloy, you have nickel, ferrum, copper, and so on. The detailed percentage of this code, you can find in the handbook of material or any encyclopedia that uh, link with the alloy fabrication. Okay, so there's a long list of this one. Okay, um, I remind me, uh, I'm not sure whether I already upload the appendix E in the Moodle or Teams. Uh, if not, then you remind me. Uh, it's a very long list of uh, uh, composition, right? Uh, this one is under the textbook that I use. It falls under appendix E. It's a, only one portion of, a short portion of what is all this material consists of, right? So um, if you're interested, uh, if you're interested, uh, maybe you can request me to give you this one, right? This one is another uh, list. Uh. So this one is for the first page, first page of the list. The table continue with all this. Uh. So uh, what is the main point of these two slides is that there's a code for that alloy steel. The code that I'm showing you here is using UNS system, unified numbering system. Okay. Any question here? Any questions so far? Hello, sir. Oh, yeah? Okay. Okay, next we talk about oxidation. Again, we still come back to oxidation. And now we talk about, we are entering into the third section. We talk about practical high temperature corrosion problems. Uh, we are talk about oxidation, uh, uh, carbonation, Suffer, uh, and so on. Huh? So the first, first
first one we talk about oxidation. Huh? Um, okay, we go for maybe another five more minutes, then we go for a break. So what mean by oxidation? Again, oxidation is linked with oxygen, meaning your metal is going to capture oxygen, become MO. Huh? Metals M capture oxygen M plus O2 or half O half O2 it become MO or MO2. Okay. So this one fall under oxidation section. Uh, why this one we arrange in the first place when we look at practical high temperature corrosion? Because this is the most common things that you will face when you use alloy in a high temperature operation. Okay, um, And we have introduced you the general equation M plus O2, you get uh, M plus half O2, you get MO. Or M plus O2, you get MO2, something like that. That one is for the formation of the oxide film. Okay. Um, we start to introduce you a few name of chemical that you will find inside the metals, especially alloy, to 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 give you a better protection for the high temperature corrosion. Okay. So one type of the oxide film, uh, or, or you can say the most common. Um, oxide film that you find in the high temperature corrosion sample that you find in the industry is chromium oxide, Cr2O3, or in short, they are called chromia. Okay, chromia or chromium oxide or Cr2O3. I myself, I like to use the chemical, uh, chemical formula, all right? Because it gives me some idea what 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 are the composition of that oxide. Okay. All right. Now um, I give you some a photo over my this side. So as you can see here, uh, in the raw form, uh, if you uh, go to the chemical lab, you're requesting for chromium oxide. They are in the green color uh, here. Right? In the green color here. Okay. So just to uh, give you some visual. Uh, AIDS that you know, oh, okay, under corrosion, uh, this will be the colors that you will see under high temperature corrosion. Okay, this one, um, uh, how, you, how you know that you're having a chromium oxide? You take the high temperature corrosion, uh, a, a sample or a devices that broke down under high temperature operation, then you cut you do the uh, cross section. Uh, you cut the, the 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 devices into half. Um, you can see that there is a layer of green color at the rupture area, or at the rupture section. That the one that break down, the one that uh, that broken. Okay, you will see green color at the region of the rupture. Of a region of the the failure point. Okay, so the green color, the green color, uh, for the green color that you see in the sample, uh, is most probably, uh, most probably it will be a uh, chromium oxide by colors, uh, judging by color by visual inspection. Uh, you see green color, it means it's it most high possibility is is a chromium oxide of course you have to do some uh, lab tests to verify the the chemical compound eh? but by visual inspection if you go to site huh, if you go to the uh, uh, industrial site uh, and there's a uh, devices broke down and your 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 technician bring bring back the sample for you all right, then he asks you to observe what what uh, write a simple report to your to your boss saying uh, what happened to that one or what why it broke down. So when you see green color at the boundaries or at the area of uh, broken under high temperature operation, uh, um, most of the time it is chromium oxide. Um,
Okay, these are just an add-on. Um, in the industry, especially, um, you have a high temperature operation. Sometimes you have other containment, uh, our other element that trigger the corrosion. Uh. Um, we have sulfur, chlorine, and so on. Uh. Um, take note on this, this statement. So in the industry, because in the industry, you you having a very complex operation condition where you mix with the fuel, the, 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 the transfer, uh, liquid, and so on. You have uh, many kinds of contribution uh, from the corrosion contribution from the contaminant, uh, sulfur, chlorine, because of the, the, the product, uh, chemical products that the pipe is sending. So it's very complex, but when we talk about oxidation itself, uh, we will limit our definition of uh, oxidation process to a clean combustion atmosphere. Okay, just take note on this statement here. So meaning the question that you see in a test or final exam, when we talk, when we ask you about oxidation, we will only contain the question to this scenario where you have a clean combustion atmosphere or uncontaminated atmosphere. Okay, so meaning if the question asks you about oxidation, you don't mix other contaminant in your equation. Okay, so when you talk about oxidation, you just take metal plus oxygen, you get oxide. So in your answer in the test or final exam, don't add all these uh, con contaminants or extra or additional chemical compound or element in the equation. Don't, don't write uh, M plus O2 plus S plus Cl plus and so on. I don't write that one. Okay, so for when we talk about oxidation, we are having limited our definition to clean environment or clean atmosphere. And just a, 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 a remind that high temperature corrosion, another name for high temperature corrosion also, uh, we call it dry corrosion. Eh? It's a dry corrosion. Um, Okay, so this one, just a common sense. So if you increase the temperature, the oxidation rate also increase. It's just a normal logic. If you increase temperature, oxidation also increase. Um, so uh, one, one solution that can resist oxidation, uh, one element, we talk about uh, uh, corrosion protection now, uh, so one of the way you control oxidation for high temperature corrosion is to increase chromium content in your alloy or in your yeah in your alloy alloy means metal plus extra chemical uh, compound so one of the ingredient you add inside your alloy is chromium okay so take note on that huh? So you want to fight oxidation, you add chromium. So what is chromium? Chromium is something look like this. Okay. And this one is in the pure state. Eh? It might not, you might not seeing this if you order chromium from the industry. Right. So um, unless you go and find the 99% pure chromium, then you see in this one. Okay. So this does illustration. Uh, what is chromium? Um, another, um, another addition uh, to oxidation besides chromium. Chromium is the most typical or traditional methods in the industry. You want to find oxidation, you add chromium. And another element or additional element that you can add to fight oxidation is aluminium, silicon, and nickel. 
and some rare metals, uh, rare earth met metals. So you add aluminium, silicon, nickel in the in the when you fabricate your alloy. Okay, you add aluminium, you add silicon, nickels, but the most dominant one you see chromium. So I I I've I have give you one table just now that uh, when we look at uh, authentic uh, standard steel and ferritic standard steel in the table there, you will see chromium content is there. So uh, that's why when you see the um, the, the graph uh, just now, the graph just now, the authentic, they can withstand very high stress at a very high temperature because of the chromium content. Okay. So just take note on that. Okay, with this, uh, I stop here for a short break. Let me end the recording.